Hey folks, I've been talking about this sort of thing for quite a while now, and as much as it sucks to say out loud, popular conservatives continue to surprise me in their barbarity. Let's make this quick. On November 7th, 2023, a monstrous human being shot and killed two nonviolent protesters in an act of cold-blooded murder on video. I'm usually pretty reserved when I talk about situations like this because I don't really want to contribute to rabid speculation about an event that I ultimately don't know the inside details of. These sorts of scenarios have really high stakes, and so I don't really want to contribute to the harassment of a person who may have ultimately done the right thing. Th that said, this is not that situation. I will proudly eat my words if some sort of magical evidence comes down from on high to exonerate this person of the things that they did, uh, but in, in the context of everything that we can see, I somehow doubt that that's what's going to happen. The footage, which I will not play here, but which is easily findable online, clearly shows a man yelling and waving a gun around before casually gunning down two protesters for no apparent reason. It's one of those videos that's horrifying, not in its viscera, but just in the way that a man was so casually able to take the lives of two people for the crime of inconveniencing him. In and of itself, a story like that's awful, but as long as it's properly handled by the relevant authorities, there's not really a whole lot of reason for it to become the subject of public discourse. What ultimately set this particular story apart is pretty much exactly what you'd expect. Conservatives seem to love this guy. People have been foaming at the mouth for the opportunity to kill protesters, but I have to imagine that on some level, they're probably pretty deeply ashamed of the fact that they have that desire, and so they have to settle for living vicariously through the few people that actually do go through with actions like that. This is the point where I have to make it clear that even if this magic hypothetical evidence were to come out, it would not change anything about what I'm about to say, because conservatives saw the same video that the rest of us did. They saw a video that sure does seem to show a man just committing straight up murder, and they were invigorated by that. The purest conglomeration of this insanity could be found under the Twitter account End Wokeness, because of course, of course that's where it ended up, um, where the, the comments are just full of blue checks, including some big names, um, just defending this creep. The consensus among these people seems to be that because everyone is so tired and worn out by all of these awful protests that are apparently going on, that somebody was bound to be driven past the breaking point and do something to put an end to it, and th therefore that this murder was on the victims. A poll posted by one user under this tweet showed that 4,000 people thought that this was justified, uh, which was well over half of the respondents. Matt Walsh gave this position as well, that because these protesters interfered with people's lives, they ultimately had it coming. And what's great about this is that we know for a fact that he's flat out lying here. In 2020, he claimed that anyone who blocks the road, no matter their cause, no matter their reason, is an asshole, and then the nanosecond that it was conservatives blocking the roads, his tune switched to, well, actually, he likes it because it's for a good cause, and now that we're back to it not being far-right people running the protest, suddenly, once again, it's on them. It's shameless grifting at its finest, and it is somehow still backed by thousands of people. It's at this point that I ask you going forward to pay attention to any time that a minority or a left winger does something bad and gets on the news. Conservatives will say that this person deserves the, the death penalty, that they should be thrown in a wood chipper, that they would love to be the person who takes them out back and shoots them in the head. But as soon as it's one of them doing something like this, they will form a defensive line around the killer and they'll, they'll raise money for their legal funds, they will do anything they can to protect them, and eventually you realize that the only thing that these two positions have in common is that they get to kill someone. And maybe, just maybe, that's because that's what they really want. Conservatives have spent years lying and claiming that they believe in personal responsibility, that poor people need to just pick themselves up by the, their bootstraps and solve their own problems, that crimes like theft are 100% the responsibility of the perpetrator and that they have nothing to do with systems, and that we shouldn't even think 
about solutions to these problems unless those solutions involve giving cops bigger guns. But somehow, a senseless murder on the side of the street? A fucking okay. They also like to LARP about being warriors for the protection of the youth, right? Don't, don't mess with mama bear and all of that. If you even think about telling, teaching our children about slavery or telling them to be nicer to gay people, we'll, we'll harass you, we'll get you fired, we'll run you out of town. But somehow, protesting the activation of a copper mine that could very easily poison our children, those people deserve to be murdered. They deserve it when that happens to them. I've always tried to be cautious when I make videos like this or make claims like this because I know that there are conservatives, people who hold those sorts of positions that aren't bloodthirsty like this, who may be wrong about most issues, but nonetheless, at least when they vote, are guided by some desire to protect the greater good. And if that's you, uh, I know that I just said that you're wrong about most things, and I meant that, um, but I hope that you can see past a person being a little bit condescending to you and ultimately do the right thing. Um, when your friends and family bring up people, members of the Daily Wire, members of this political bloc, as political role models, don't stand for it. Remember all of the lies and the bloodlust, and and call it out when you see it. I'd, and I don't know, like, reflect on some level on the fact that the political movement that you're a part of is so friendly to ideas like that, to, to behaviors like that. Not to say that you personally feel the way that these people do, but that maybe some of the things that you think are kind of welcoming to people who do believe things like this and think this way, uh, because it's starting to get tiring seeing the number of people with actual political influence who just want pe people dead, that just want to kill people, and that's it.